Ladies and gentlemen, your very good health. Thank goodness for the National Health Service. But uh, many of us don't really use it as a health service at all, merely as a sort of human body repair shop or service station. Did you know that out of every pound spent by the government, over 10 pence goes on health and social services? In Wales alone, the health service costs every man, woman and child over two pounds every week at 1978 prices. It would be interesting to know how much of that is spent on illnesses that we bring on ourselves. Many people, of course, are in hospital through no fault of their own. There, but for the grace of God. Pictures like this make you realize how fortunate most of us really are. The health service doesn't just consist of hospitals and ambulances, of course. Family doctors, health visitors, midwives, and many others do their best to detect early signs of trouble and to ward it off. In some areas, health authorities run a health education service which aims to persuade people to look after their own health more effectively and so reduce their need to depend on the health repair facilities. All of these services need hundreds of people to maintain them. Doctors, nurses, midwives, health visitors, radiographers, pharmacists, porters, theatre technicians, orderlies, physiotherapists, pharmacists, dentists, opticians, pathologists, ambulance drivers, clerks, administrators, telephonists, engineers, chiropodists, the list is almost endless. In Wales alone, the health service employs roughly 50,000 people, and the number is increasing by well over a thousand every year. It takes some doing to control an organization like that. No wonder it's a bit like the maze in Hampton Court. C-H-C. What's that, you ask? A Cardiff Hockey Club? No. Cloyd Hunting Centre? No. Carmarthen Highland Circle? No. Crickyard Hikers and Climbers? No. It means Community Health Council. Do you know what that is? Well, I should imagine um, community being the area around somewhere and its health and how you're going to look after it or what problems there are. Have you heard of the Community Health Council? No. No. I don't think so. I've heard of it, yes. Do you know much about it? No. What I know about them is from what I've heard on television, that they deal with problems within the health service, really. But all the uh, council tables are all over there on great yeah. place from the corner. You have a little boy here going to hospital. If you were dissatisfied with the way in which they treated him, what would you do about it to take the matter further? Um, I'm not sure who to get in contact with, but I would definitely take it further. Oh, no, I find you're still very good. Very because, good. Uh, I took the top of my finger off in match, and it's perfect now. Well, that's one satisfied customer at least. Remember, if you chop off the top of your finger, don't let the wife sew it back on again. Get the NHS to do the job instead. But seriously, if you don't know much about the CHC, come in and find out more about us. Hello. The Community Health Council, or the CHC as we call it, is your voice in the National Health Service. We don't actually run any part of the health service. That's the job of the area health authority. 
the Community Health Council is a consumer advisory body established by the government to protect your interests. We're here to help and advise if you run into difficulties with the health service or have any complaints against it. We're here to monitor the standard of the local services provided and also to try to ensure that those services are developed in a way that meets the real needs of the local community. Fine talk, you may think, but what does it all add up to in practice? Let's look at a few examples. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. <coughs> He says I'll be all right now for the next few months. All oh, right, so then, Mrs. Jenkins. Uh, we'll send you a reminder to come again in about six months' time. Uh, that's twenty pounds, please. Oh? I thought it was much less than that under the National Health. Yes, it is on the NHS. But you've been treated privately. What do you mean, privately? I never asked for private treatment. Well, I'm afraid, Mrs. Jenkins, that all treatment is private treatment, unless you ask for it specifically under the NHS. You didn't ask. Therefore, the treatment is private. Oh, come on now, that can't be right. It didn't cost me anything before. Did you know you were supposed to ask for treatment under the National Health Service? Unfortunately, the receptionist was right, you know. That's just a simple bit of advice from the Community Health Council. When you go to the dentist, always make it clear before you have any treatment at all if you want it on the National Health Service. It's too late afterwards. Hmm, too late afterwards. That's it. Mind you, many CHCs have taken it much further than that. They're trying to ensure that all dentists have to ask patients if they want NHS treatment. And many of us would like to see the present position reversed, with all dentists automatically giving NHS treatment unless someone specifically asks for private treatment and we're trying to persuade the government to see our point of view and change the regulations. Hello, what's happening now? This is a set of spectacle frames, all available on the NHS. But uh, unfortunately, you won't see all of them displayed in every optician's shop. Many customers almost automatically go for more expensive private frames just because they don't know what's available on the health service. So remember, ask to see the NHS range first. CHCs are urging the government to require all opticians to display the whole range of frames and their prices. We've also been pressing for more updated designs too. Here's something else that has been worrying CHCs quite a bit. It's a drug called Eraldin or Practolol, and it was given to a large number of patients suffering from heart conditions between 1970 and 1975. Thea James from Merthyr Tydfil took the drug, but later found that it had a number of very unfortunate side effects. Well, before I started taking Neuralden in 1972, I did not have any of these illnesses. After I'd been on Neuralden a short time, my vision started to go. After that, I started developing the many years disease and stomach complaints, and I was very, very ill. I'm still ill, and in fact, I've been pretty ill over the last couple of months with the stomach and chest. Um, the only common denominator for the onset of my illnesses is the fact that they occurred after I started the treatment with Eraldin, which I took for three and a half years, and I was taking a high dosage of Eraldin tablets six a day. So what can the CHC do about a problem like that? Um, I find that uh, members are getting a little bit um, disconcerted that they don't feel, you know, there's any significant pro progress. And I'm just wondering what sort of... Bryn Williams, secretary of the local community health council, discusses the problem with colleagues and a professional advisor. First of all, we tried to establish how many people had taken Araldin in our locality and what kinds of side effects they had suffered. The manufacturers, while not admitting any legal liability, were prepared to consider claims for compensation for a number of side effects. We advised people how to claim compensation and referred them to solicitors and medical specialists where necessary. By keeping a careful record of conditions for which the manufacturers do not at present pay compensation, we hope to persuade them to widen the scope of the scheme to include more sufferers. We're also very anxious to try to make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen in future with other new drugs. 
We urge the government to ensure more stricter tests before new drugs can be put on the market and to establish a more effective monitoring system once they are in use. The important thing is that individual patients should not be left to fight their battles alone. Society must help those who have suffered through no fault of their own. As you see, CHCs deal with a very wide variety of issues. But most of our problems relate to doctors and hospitals. The sort of problem we're looking at now could be repeated a thousand times over. I think we'd better let the consultant have a look at you, Mrs. Evans, just to make sure. Can you take this note or post it, if you like, to the general, and then they'll let you know when to go in for investigation, all right? Right. Thank you, Doctor. That's all right, then. It may be a few weeks before they see you, but there's nothing to worry about. I'll see you again when we've had the results of the investigation. All right? Good night. Look, Ma'am, it's over six weeks since you sent that letter to the hospital. There's no point in moaning here. I'm on the phone now to see how much longer you've got to wait. Oh, don't bother, dear. They'll send for me when they're ready for me. Hello, um, do you make appointments to see Dr. Owen? Oh, well, Dr. Parry, my mother's doctor, sent a letter, oh, about six weeks ago, and we still haven't heard anything. No. What? Nine months? Can't they see her before then? No. All right, then. Thank you very much. Goodbye. She said there's so many people waiting to see him, you'll have to wait nine months. Nine months? Yes. Well, I thought that Dr. Parry said it would only be a couple of weeks. Oh, I said there was no point in phoning, didn't I? You've just got to wait till they're ready for you. Hello, Mum. Oh, come on in, Beth. So long, Mum. You all right? Still got that old pain, have you? I'm gonna phone the hospital again. It's silly, you can't go on suffering like this. Now sit down while I go and phone. Oh, no, no, no. It's no good, Dan. There's no point in making a fuss. They said I'd have to wait nine months, so they won't see me yet. No, I know. Oh, now look, you'll only make me worse if you start arguing. I've just got to grin and bear it and wait till my turn comes. If you really want to make me feel better, go make me a cup of tea, will you, Beth? Oh, all right. Well, was Mother right? Has she got a grin and bear it until she's sent for? Well, yes, I suppose so. After all, there's not supposed to be any queue jumping in the NHS. No, you're right there. No one should jump the queue, not unless there's a good reason for it. But if you think your condition is getting worse while you're waiting to hear from the hospital, don't hesitate to consult your doctor again. And if he thinks it necessary, he'll arrange a more urgent appointment for you. Got it? Yes, got it. Don't hesitate to consult your own doctor again if you think you're getting worse. Long waiting lists are a headache, of course. CHCs get hold of the facts and try to hammer out suggestions for ways in which the health authorities might try to bring them down. You see, a CHC, though basically a consumer body, is also concerned about overall standards and the extent of health service facilities in its area. And it will do everything in its power to help the Area Health Authority improve the standards provided. In fact, the Area Health Authorities just cannot ignore what the CHC says. They have to consult the Community Health Council by law before they introduce any basic changes to their services. And if the CHC doesn't agree with the health authorities' proposals, the matter is referred to the Secretary of State. Hmm, yes. You might ask, who are the CHC that they should have such influence? Their job is to represent you, the patient, the consumer, and the local community. But who are they, you're thinking? Who chooses them? Hmm. 
There are 22 CHCs in Wales and their membership varies from 15 to 32 according to the population of the area they serve. At least one half of the members are chosen by the local authorities in the area. At least a third are chosen by voluntary organisations with a special interest in health, like the Red Cross and John's Ambulance, the WRVS, Leagues of Hospital Friends or the Society for Mentally Handicapped Children. The remainder are appointed by the Secretary of State to make sure that all parts of the area and all major interest groups are covered. So whilst not directly elected, the CHC does contain a representative cross-section of the local community. That doesn't mean, however, that the CHC thinks it always knows what the public wants. Great pains are taken to try to find out just what you think about local issues, such as a proposal to close a hospital or transfer a clinic or add fluoride to the water. I think if you were young, you were treated Apart from holding public meetings, CHCs also organize exhibitions and conferences, arrange meetings for voluntary organizations, and send speakers to local voluntary bodies. Others carry out on-the-street surveys, to find out what individual people think about certain issues. And all that activity isn't for nothing. Area health authorities do take some notice. For example, the health authority wanted to close this hospital, which was surplus to requirements. But following representations from the CHC, the authority agreed to support our proposals that it should be used for the mentally handicapped. Unfortunately, on this occasion, we failed to persuade the Secretary of State that it was a viable plan. But the Secretary of State did support the CHC when a hospital for elderly people was threatened with closure in the same locality, and the hospital was kept open. And in the same way, several hospitals in other parts of Wales have been kept open largely due to the initiative shown by the local CHC, backed by their local community. Apart from their other duties, CHC members pay regular visits to hospitals and clinics in their area to see for themselves that the service is running smoothly. We spoke with Mrs Anne Cloyd Roberts, a member of the Cardiff CHC, as she completed such a visit to the University Hospital in Cardiff. Well, I've just finished being a patient myself. I spent a fortnight in hospital and then went to outpatients on about eight separate occasions. And I know that many times I had complaints to make about the long waits that I had in outpatients, sometimes up to two and a half hours, and nobody ever explained to me why I was waiting. Now, I think we've got a right to know if we're kept waiting after our, our appointment time and we, the CHC members, can help you find the reasons for these sort of waits. There are many things that happen to us when we are patients in hospital or when we're patients with a family doctor. And sometimes we've got very real complaints and sometimes we've got suggestions to make about these sort of improvements we'd like to see in the health service. Now, again, if you don't want to make those suggestions or those complaints directly, either to the hospital or to the Family Practitioner Committee, then you can make them through your CHC member. We're here to help you make those complaints or suggestions. I think uh, CHCs can cover a very wide variety of subjects, uh, not simply hospitals and doctors, as I've tried to explain. And if you want to get hold of us, you can find us in the telephone directory under Community Health Council, or you can get in touch with the health authorities and ask for your CHC number. We're here to help you. Well, do you know a bit more about the CHC now? Don't tell me you've been sleeping all the time and I've been wasting my breath. Well, what do you know about a CHC? CHC stands for Community Health Council. It is an official consumer body independent of the health service itself. Its job is to help and advise with any individual problems in the health service other than clinical matters. CHC members visit health service premises to help ensure that the highest possible standards are being maintained. CHC members discuss general health problems affecting the locality and they want to know your views which they will pass on to the health authority 
and to the government. The health authority has to consult the CHC on any proposed changes in the health service in its area. If the CHC disapproves, the matter is automatically referred to the Secretary of State. It's your health we're concerned with and the level of health facilities in your area. If you're worried about either, stop for a moment. Take time out to phone or visit your local CHC. The address and number is in the telephone directory under Community Health Councils. Remember, we are at your service. Our concern is your health. <laughs>